let's go here okay so a couple of things guys if you do me a favor grab your book and have your book at chapter 18 please and let's go talk a little bit about fiber optics fiber optics as we all know it's a means of uh, wire communication between two points um, or it's instead of wire, wireless communication you have to have some type of a wire um, of communicating between two buildings, two institutions, two states, two different things. So it's a highway for information. Everybody knows what a fiber optics is, highway for information. There's an article in any secret book as about fiber optics, believe it or not. The article that talks about fiber optics in, in the, the NEC code book, it it focuses, Chris, not on how to install a fiber optics, I mean how you, how you terminate and so forth and what the technology is. It focuses on the wiring methods. They use for fiber optics. For example, I can summarize it for you in a couple of words. If you install a fiber optics cable in the seal in a plenum ceiling, do you, what do you expect the fiber optic cable to be? Plenum rated. If you install a fiber optic cable, they call them plenum rated. So, it, it, plenum rated equipment or cables, guys, are tested by you out to generate certain amount of smoke and spread certain amount of fire. So they have criteria for the generation of the smoke upon the existence of a fire and the spread of the fire. So based on that criteria, they list them as a plenum rated cable. So you have a plenum rated fire alarm cable, plenum rated communication cable, plenum rated fiber optic cables. You put them in the, in the, in the, ceil in the, in the ceiling, uh, plenum ceiling, it has to be plenum rated or you have to install them in metallic conduits. The option, most of the time they are plenum rated, no conduits needed. If you put them guys in a riser, a riser is going from the first floor done with it to the fourth floor. That's called a riser because you're rising. It has to be a riser rated. Riser rated means they are stronger so they can handle their weight as you pull them through the conduit, that conduit or, or, or you pull them from, or you pull them from uh, floor one to floor five. So these are what the code talks about. Um, what we're going to talk about guys today is the uh, advantages. Oops. Talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Why am I can't, can't I go up here? Okay. Advantages and disadvantages. I don't want to cooperate with me today. Okay. Um, advantages of fiber optics over the copper, which is coaxial cable or twisted pairs. Uh, discuss the fiber optics cables, construction of the cables. Refraction is the key word that we always use. Refraction is the keyword that we always guys use with um, with fiber optics, right? Yeah, the light will refract through that channel and go from point A to point B. Um, how the light is transmitted through the cables, that's a couple of things we're going to talk about. <clears throat> we have, um, in order to have a fiber optics, um, you have to have two very important pieces, Chris. One is called the transmitter, the other one is the receiver. So like, like anything else, you need to be able to transmit in a light format, my voice will be converted into light via diode, and that diode will be my transmitter. Every time Chad yak, it changes into light and send it through this channel. That channel will channel it all the way to the other end. On the other hand, a photo, uh, um, a photo cell will be on the other end, a transmit, uh, receiver. It receives my voice and convert it back into electrical current um, and feed it into the system. So transmitters and receivers, the big deal. Um, different types of fiber optic con connectors, that's not a whole lot to us unless you want to be in the fiber optics connection. Um, concerns about making fiber optic connections. Um, if you ever talked about people who are expert in fiber optic termination guys, which we have IBW um, Power Limited JTC here, they do a great job on, the, on a fiber optics at low voltage. Uh, they tell you, Problem number one with fiber optics is termination. The cable is okay. If you do a sloppy job on the termination, you can lose a lot of data because of the termination. So that's a, that's a big deal. Okay, so a couple of things, guys, I want to talk about in terms of copper. So your alternative when you transmit data, either wireless, which is great, but a, a lot of application guys don't ask me when it becomes a great idea to do wired versus wireless. There's a lot of technologies. But either you do twisted pair or pairs, or you can do coaxial cable, give you a big chunk of data, or you can do fiber optics. The whole idea of fiber optics, to get, it's, uh, it, and, and the way I understand it, correct me, because you've been in the telecommunication, imagine alleys, 
Alley is probably the twisted pair for the most part. And then you move into um, um, the highways or let's say just uh, boulevards, and that will be your coaxial cable. And then you move to interstates, and that will open it as fiber optics in terms of the flow of energy, the flow of data inside that. <coughs> fiber optics also have a, does it want to go today? Fiber optics also guys have an advantage. Um, there is no immune to electromagnetic interference. Every time, there is no current, you're transmitting light. If you don't transmit light, current, then you have you don't have electromagnetic interference. So that's a big deal in terms of interference with other data. Uh, very high data transmission, a couple of numbers here. I know how accurate these numbers are. Um, so 200,000 megabytes per second and so forth. So basically major highways of trans tr transmitting uh, data. So the we all know downloading all these videos from uh, um, uh, from YouTube and so forth of all these movies, the bigger the highway, the better, right? A lot of traffic can move through them. Very wide bandwidth, you can send again, six, high, six lane highway versus two lane highway. That's a bandwidth, right? Do you want a two lane highway or a six lane highway? That's a six lane highway compared to twisted pair two lane highway. Bigger information, faster transmission. Um, very wide bandwidth. Um, small and light in weight too is a big deal because they are, weight is a big deal when you have big chunk of fiber optics going guys to, to feed a stadium or so forth. Any comments, any questions? They're doing what they're doing in Minnesota. They're, they're, they're putting fiber optics all over in the rural areas. Um, my brother-in-law lives up north and they give him a fiber optics right to their area and you can tie with fiber optics. So it's uh, fast with all the movies and so forth. You can have them guys single duplex or any combination. Um, the core, there's a couple of things the way they make them, you probably have uh, have seen. This is the construction of it, the core, that's where the data is going to be transmitted. Uh, obviously, we convert into light and shoot them through this highway, which could be glass or plastic. The clearing here is to, to, to protect the glass, the transmission means, and the sheet, of course, to protect um, the whole system together as if it's if it's direct buried cable you have to put a, a sheet that's direct buried cable rated wet location and so forth so that's really the most important thing is the, the core where the information is going to go right through it the rest is there to protect the system it's like insulation insulation for the for the voltage here instead of insulating a voltage you're really channeling you're channeling the, the, the light to go from point a to point b so here's a core composed of glass or plastic, cladding or clad, uh, made of plastic to protect the whole envelope around it, to protect the glass that you're going to transmit through. It protects the core from the environment, increase the size and the, the strength of the cable. The size and the strength of the cable. So you can channel the data directly through that one, con confine the light instead of going all over find the light to go right through that core that you want it to go through. And the sheet, of course, surrounds the cable, protects the fiber from the environment. That's your uh, wet location, direct buried sheath, if you want to put it direct buried sheath, or if it's, um, you know, plenum sheath, if you're going to have it in a plenum rated cable, uh, ceiling and so forth. Any question, guys, about the construction? You, a lot of you guys have seen that, right? Any question about the construction? So, Again, that's a, a class like this, quick class, guys, for us as the designers, a quick review that there is a whole industry. When we went to Bishad Kool Erickson, anybody remember what they told us? They have the low voltage group. If you go into the low voltage group, you can go deeper and deeper into the fiber optics design. And, uh, and uh, so it's a whole different animal. Um, and we're not talking about a commercial building like we did, guys, for uh, like a, a 12,000 square foot commercial building and find a coaxial cable fiber optics for it. We're talking about a stadium. How do you do the telecommunication system and the fire alarm system and the security system for a building like the stadium or hospital? Um, so these are, the, these are the size and the challenge. We had, a, we had a chance to tour the Gopher Stadium one time and they have a couple of pictures if anybody's interested I can show you. It's unreal, you get into their fire alarm room you think fire alarm what? A couple of smoke detectors tied with uh, addressable system to a fire alarm panel and call it a day. It's a, it's, it's a whole different animal. Same thing with the telecommunication guys and the cables that you can use. 
How does that system work? We all know and learn, guys, light travel in a straight lines. Um, because it travels in a straight line, Chris, so you're familiar with that one, I can't get the light to go around corners. So if, you, if I channel it through this fiber, gla fiber optics, a glass core or a plastic core, I can channel that light around corners. That's the most important thing of, of fiber optics is not only takes a light, because I can send the light straight, right, straight beam. But the nice thing about the, the core, it, it channels that light and takes it in any direction I want it to go. Inside a building like this, I'm going to take a signal from here to Mr. Pelgic in his office down there. That's not a straight line. There's three stories between us. So you put a fiber optics, you basically create a channel for that light to retract all the way down to, to wherever you want it to go. So refraction, the word that they use is refraction. Um, any comments, guys? So that's uh, the major part is the fiber optics, is to try to channel this light through around corners. And through store and stories and through buildings and uh, and walls, there's something called the index of refraction. That's how efficient how efficient the fiber optic cable is. How efficient the fiber optic cable is. So uh, they take its speed of light in the vacuum. That's as high as you can get. You shoot the the light through the vacuum. That's as high as you get. Convert to the speed of light in any material. So you divide these two numbers, give you a value. That's almost like your efficiency of, you, of that, that fiber optic cable. The higher that number, the better fiber optics cable, um, um, the speed of light. So, the, so you divide them, you get you the efficiency of, of the system. Um, so obviously, the higher the number, the lower, as a matter of fact. The higher the number, the lower the efficiency. Because ideally, you want this one to be one, to be the speed of the light in the vacuum is the same as the speed of light in this glass. It doesn't work this way. Usually this number at the bottom is smaller. This number at the bottom is smaller than the number. So ideally you want this one to be one. Most of the time it's going to be more than one. As close to one you can get, as efficient your system would be, if that makes sense. Chris, can you jump on that one? No. The bottom one has to be more Yes. <laughs> ideally, ideally, again, ideal situation is if if it's one over one, give you one. That's 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 as fast as you can get. But because of again physics and absorption of light in all these glass material and plastic, you're gonna go a lower number here. So long story short, the lower the 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 n here, the the lower the refraction, the index refraction index, the better the equipment will be. Uh, the way it works, right? Fiber optics, you have a source of light, you shoot it through this glass or, or, or plastic that channel, and it channel, the light will refract through the whole beam and come back from the other end. Really as simple as that. This source here, um, I can use it as an actual light to lit an area with a fixture, or I can use it, convert it back into electricity and uh, convert it back to electricity and, 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 and receive it as data. Here's the, the, the small, easy concept of the small and easy concept of operation. This is not cooperating today. Um, as you can see, you have the light source here, guys, typically a diode. You put the electricity current and voltage on this side. You burn this uh, light. From this light, you get your light, and then the light will travel through this, um, the core, through the core. Uh, the cladding, the core is where the light is going to transmit. The cladding is what's going to channel. Can you see how it channels it? It doesn't allow it to go everywhere. Otherwise, the light will go everywhere. It channels it around corners, wherever you want it, to your destination. So you need the core for the light to transmit as fast as you can. That's where your efficiency of transmission is. You need the cladding in order to, to, for the light to bounce off these walls and, and, and go in the right direction, not go in the opposite direction or retract all over. And of course, the sheath is to protect the system. Okay, a couple of cable losses, guys. They talk about cable losses. Um, light skip through the cladding. Remember that cladding thing that channel it? Some of the light will, will, will be absorbed or skip. And absorbed and absorbed by the sheath. That light is actually data, so it's going to reduce your data transmission. 
uh, greatest loss occur always. Always quests have been told and done and expert in the is through the termination. Every time you have it, you can't believe after they do termination, guys, on these, they go test the terminations. Termination is your weakest link in the fiber optics system. Terminations or splices, and a splices tool. Um, ends must be cleaned and free of nicks and scratches and uneven strands. So there's really a science how to cut these cables and how to terminate them and splice them. Should be polished. When terminated, a special knife cutting tools available, so you have to have a whole set for terminating fiber optics. Just be aware of this. I know, I wonder if any one of you would be able to do that one, but be aware that there is tools directly related to dealing with fiber optic cable, unlike coaxial cable um, or, or twisted pair where I can use any plier to cut it and for the most part. Uh, these are special system. If you want a system that works good, you have to use special tools for that. Um, okay, so the, the, the first part, guys, the first part is the transmitter. That's the diode that you want to burn electricity to get you light so you can transmit this light. We have the wavelength can be measured by the color of the emitted light, so they go into the wavelength. Which wavelength? Special width can affect the color distortion, so these are two, two factors we have to take into consideration when you're doing the transmission. Um, the angle. N is the angle at which light is emitted from the source. Also, that's that that's another factor for selecting the transmitters. And the two sources that they use are the laser or LEDs. Laser or LEDs. I don't claim to be which one is better and so forth. Laser and LEDs. So you basically take take voltage current, burn them as light, shoot them through this channel um, to the other destination through the transmitters. Any comments, guys, about the transmitters? The source of the transmitter is convert volt amp into light, into light. So here's what you're gonna get. You get your you you bring your volt amp here, convert it into light, channel it through the optical cable, the fiber optic cable to the destination. At the destination, and then you're gonna have a receiver. The same thing at the destination. Here's your light coming here. For the receiver, they use photodiode. A photodiode is activated by light. Like photocell detectors and, um, and a photodiode, you shoot the light right here. It sends that there's a light. It's meant electronically to convert the light, like photovoltaic almost. Uh, it, take it and convert the light directly into current, small amount of current, then you up. You boost that current, and that will be Chad Curdy's voice and picture, or your picture, or whatever. Could be da data, um, voice, videos, whatever you want it to be. Any comments, guys? These are really receiver, the transmitters, and receivers are the most important things. Then they have the term transceiver. Most of the time, we need to be able to transmit and receive. It's not enough just to transmit. That's one-way street, right? Transmit, receive, that's one-way communication. We lost this long time ago, one-way communication. You want to be two-street communication. So they put a transmitter and a receiver in one in one pack, package, and that will be a transceiver. That's typical, Chris, in all the equipments that we use in telecommunication. You need to be able to go two-street two street communication. Then... Um, for detector diodes and repeaters. They use repeaters with telecommunication all the time, guys, because the voice telecommunication system, unlike power system, we are talking about 4,000 amp in the power system. In the telecommunication, you're talking about microamps and milliamps, and the voltage is very small voltage. So you can't transmit milliamps and microamps longer distances. I remember that when I was in college, like you guys, we used to use modulated signal. I don't know if you've done that, Chris. Modulate. There is a term called modulated signal. This is a very powerful term in communication. Modulated signal, guys, they take my voice, which is a tiny, tiny little uh, frequency, and they set it in a bus. Literally, that's the, the modulating signal. They put it on a bus, that's a bigger signal, and carry my voice anywhere else you want it across the globe. So all the, that's how they do the telecommunication. You take any signal, voice, data, um, audio, video, or data, and you and you ride it. It rides on a bigger signal, and you shoot it across the globe. And when you reach the other destination, 
you take the signal that you want, the voice, and you leave the carrier. So there's a, then it becomes a modulated signal. That's the signal that's like a, a, that carries you from destination A to destination B. Then they have repeaters that repeat the signal to make sure it's, it, 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 it can reach the destination. Boost the signal in a long distances through the fiber optics. Reshape digital signals back into the original form. Because your job is to take my voice and 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 light in this case, well, and and send the, a, a, a longer distances, and at the end take the carrier away, and just take my voice. So you have you have to have a carrier for it. So, so you, especially for the telecommunication, you hear a lot about modulated signal, modulated signal. This is how the transceiver works, guys. You can communicate from St. Cloud right here, transmitter receiver into the series with fiber optic cable. They're doing a lot, a lot of fiber optics guys, either underground or overhead with a transmission line. There's technology right now. Do you see these big towers that's sitting like this? Do you see the shield cable at the top of the towers? You see all the time that shields it from lightning. Inside that shield cable, what they do right now, there's technology where they put the fiber optics right on the top of the sheet inside the core of the shielding cable, fiber optics. Then they can use the transmission lines, which is going all over the country. They use it to carry a tra they carry a data as well as um, power, of course. So that's a technology that you can use. It, it, it's really unique and interesting. Okay, the last thing is, so we know they have a transmitter receiver and the fiber optic cable in between them. Convert into light, receive as a light, convert back into volt amps. Okay, air gap between cables or devices. Um, the connection, guys, if you have an air gap between cables or devices, it's going to change the index of refraction, make it bigger, so you lost data. You lost data. Because whatever this one, Chris, how do you say that one, Chris? There is no reflection, so it send it back to the, the sender. Produce an optical resonant cavity. It resonates, causes light to ref uh, reflect back into the transmitter. So I'm sending this way and it's coming back to me instead of going back to you. So there's a lot of issues, guys, that could could happen um, with this little gap. That's why if you ever talk to people who are installing it, they always termination, termination, termination. They actually go back and test the termination. The, an average Joe, well not average Joe, a technician will go do the termination and then a, a master will go there and test all these terminations. Uh, not aligned correctly, if you have a not aligned correctly the cable, part of the light signals will not be transmitted between the two cables and the device. So alignment of cables is a big deal. So can't emphasize if you're into this business, uh, termination is a big, big deal. Losses due, due to poor connection is measured into the log. You guys remember that? DBs, the decibels. What they do, they take the power output divided, divided by the power input, and they take the log 10. Anybody have done logs? Log 10 on the scientific calculator, and multiply it by 10. So that's how they calculate the DBs, the output, um, or the losses of the system, the losses of the system. Coupling devices, it, this is talks about the three types that they use guys, threaded pin ups and push, uh, and push pull. The last one is an excellent alignment and give you the smallest, you want this number to be the smallest, dB. So point to the smaller, the better transmission you have. The smaller, the better transmission. So you can go through from threaded into pin ups, in, uh, pin up into push, uh, push pull and with with the dp that comes to it granted the last one is the best any comments any questions so that's uh, that's your type of connection and then they go through a lot of things guys uh polish and so forth uh, then you have to have microscope used to examine connection for the possible uh problems um, you have prediction toolkit contains all of this, the crimp tool and the crimping dies and polishing bushings and all this good stuff. So I can't emphasize there's a picture of that, that tool in page uh, 282, that toolkit for making fiber optic connections. So a big, big deal. 
uh, microscope with the trip, tripod and a uh, bunch of other things that you need to have inside strippers and so forth. Um, so these are the tools that you have to do. We don't emphasize the tools because you guys are not going to carry the tools and go go carry them uh, and do them. Okay, so that's about it in the fiber optics as a means of telecommunication, guys. The other use of fiber optics, any question about fiber optics as a means of communicating data? Any question about that? I know this is very simple, straightforward. This is just to get you excited. Hopefully, um, Dustin, my friend, will get into the low voltage at Dunham's, and then you, you come here and trade all of us. So that's kind of a, so you're hearing about fiber optics from a power engineer. Um, so the other application of fiber optics, guys, is lighting. Lighting is a major application of fiber optics. So you can use, um, you can use, here's what they do. They have, um, they can use a lighting fixture. You take electricity, volt amp, you burn electricity by changing it into a light. And now we have light. Now we channel that light to multiple light fixture only. They are not electrical fixture, light fixture only. So if you can imagine a fixture right here, electrical fixture, converting light in this room with fiber optics channeling it to each one of these fixtures. These fixtures above your head will be not electrical lighting fixture, not lighting fixture, electrical lighting fixture, will be just lighting fixture, nothing in it other than light. And the, the, the goal of this light is to take the light of this fixture, is to take the light from generate it somewhere else and distribute the light evenly for general use. So where would you, it's expensive, they claim, where would you use it around swimming pool, hazardous location is a good application for it. Why would we use this? Because of around swimming pool, guys, if you put a fixture right there, it says you, you are putting electricity next to water, and enemy number one of electricity is what? Water. If you want to kill, an, and also, two, um, well, enemy number one is heat, but electricity becomes dangerous, much, much more dangerous if you put yourself next to the water, especially on a grounded system, which most of the time we use. Okay, so we have a swimming pool because there is no hazard. Anywhere outdoor in walkway, walkways, uh, accent lighting of a building is another application for it, and walkways. Um, so how do they do this? They have supply single lighting source somewhere else, channel it through the cable, now we're interested in transmitting lights. Not so you, you generate light with a diode, you tra diodes, you transmit this light through your fiber optics into lighting fixtures that's not electrical, that just light lighting fixtures, and you distribute the light anywhere you want. So no heat, no electrical connection, lamps never need replacement. There is no nothing, right? It's not uh, cool in an area in a very high bay area, guys, you, now you eliminate the whole maintenance on that fixture. Well, almost, you still have to clean them. You eliminate the whole maintenance area. No ballast to change, no connection to fail, no lamp to fail, all lamps fails. So that's a good deal. What's the drawback? Expensive. Ideal for application in museums also to uh, accent valuable work of art instead of putting guys you put any fixture you're going to generate heat in uh, next to a valuable art so what happened if you put heat next to valuable art you're going to destroy that piece of uh, 20 million dollar picture of uh, chris so um so what they do is fiber optic fiber optic lighting becomes a good option in these areas and another thing, Chris, and help me here with it, electromagnetic field, no electromagnetic field for the light. You're not transmitting. Every time you don't transmit a current, there is no magnetic field for the most part. Then if you have sensitive electronic equipment, that's a good application to put a light there, and you need to put a light in an area where there's very sensitive electronic equipment. Um, that could be another option. So, so hazardous location could be an option, swimming pool an option. Uh, sensitive electronic equipment area is an option. Museums for valuable art is another option for this lighting source. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's, here's how it works. You have the illuminator, so-called the illuminator. This is where you bring your 277 20 amp circuit to it, one or multiple. You generate light here. You channel the light through the fiber optics into the end fixtures, these are the light fixture in fixtures, nothing on them other than uh, diffusers to diffuse 
um, and protect and channel the light in the direction that you want it to do. Any question, guys, about this type of lighting system? Any question? So be aware that this is an option around swimming pool, hazardous location, and museums. And that's all what we want you to know as designers about fiber optics. I want to remind you guys that NEC code book has an article that talks about fiber optics too. And the article that talks about fiber optics, um, and it, it only the only concern that I said is when you put them in a plenum, they have to be plenum rated or in an EMT, in a, in a metallic conduit. If you put them in a riser, they, the cables have to be riser rated. If you put them underground, uh, in a wet location. Anybody can guess what the cable have to be if you put them in a wet location? Have to be rated for wet location, direct buried. Um, a couple of other things, guys, you can't, you can't, you have to support them independently from any other system. Chris, that's the code talks about this. Does it tell you anything about the connections, though? How to connect them, how efficient they are. It just talks about how to install them in conduit and wire system. And the code has a bunch of, um, a bunch of, uh, uh, Fiber optics. Article 770, article optical fiber cables and raceways, and they added raceways. And the code guys have a couple of acronyms that they use for them. And you have to, if you are getting to this industry, article 770 is your baby. It talks about OFNP, non conductive optical fiber plenum cable. That's it, that's the term. You look at a cable, and on the cable installation, now, all of you guys know what THHN is, right? THHN, we use it indoor, right? Rated for 90 degrees. You can interpret the name. Now, if you're in the low voltage fiber optic system, you have to be able to inter interpret OFNP. You're gonna find a cable OF or OFNP. If you don't know, you're gonna to go to Article 770. It'll tell you this baby is non-conductive optical fiber plenum cable. If you go to, there's one guys that says, um, says OFNR, non-conductive optical fiber riser cable. That's meant for riser. So the inspectors, when you guys look at these, when they install them, Nick, and when you become a project manager, um, they're gonna be looking at these labels as they look as they inspect your work in the building. Is it rated for a plenum? Is it a riser? So these are a big deal, all in the NEC code book. There's a huge tables. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not, we teach you for the power limited technician. If you're a power limited technician, come to our classes. We'll, we'll walk you right through this. We'll tell you which cable. This is 310.16, 310.13B16. That's it for the fiber optics. And it will list in every place where you need to, um, what, what type of cable and or conduit that can be, can be used in that particular location or situation. I want to spare you the, the knowledge of this. And um, so feel free, guys, if you need more information. When I want you to understand, being a lot of you guys are, are green in this industry, there is an article that talks about 770. That's the article that talks about fiber optics. It's not just up in the air. Cool? Any question about this, guys? Okay, let me give you five minutes and I'm going to do the uh, topic, really nice topic, harmonics. Talk about um, harmonics. Harmonics, being engineers and designers, guys, you walk into any place and they have tripping, circuit breakers are tripping, transformers are burning, conductors are hot and terminations are burning. So that could be an it could be an indication that you have a harmonic problem. So this chapter hopefully gets you excited about harmonics and just to give give you a couple of hints about harmonics. Before I go ahead and start, guys, I want to remind you that there are harmonic analyzers that you can put in any system and it will tell you any type of harmonic, any frequency, and the magnitude of this harmonic. And you don't need to do it by hand. So there's the technology is way far in the harmonic. You can buy a multi-function meter, Chris, and put it in a building, the 4,000 amp switch gear. If you buy the high-end meter, that meter can send you a report to your laptop about tons of things. One of them is analysis of the harmonic system in your building. Analyze it. It tells you what harmonic do you have, what big of a problem this harmonic is, and a recommendation of, a recommendation of solution for this harmonic. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about harmonic, guys. Um, what I'm going to talk 
about is uh, describe of harmonics. Hopefully that will work. Yeah, describe of harmonics. Um, why do we care the problem? Why do we care about harmonic? What is harmonic and why do we care about them? If we don't care about them, we're electrical designers and engineers, right? If we don't care about them, why should we look at them? So that's a big deal. And also the, identify the characteristics of different harmonics. Are not all offenders the same? So these are, all of them are offenders. Harmonics are bad news. When you hear the word harmonics, it's a bad news, electrically speaking. I don't know of any application for them that's, <laughs> that's good. They are bad, but not they are not they, not all of them are the same, and not all of them are as bad. Um, a couple of things that we will talk about: there's a test to determine if you have a harmonic problem exists in your plant. You will be paid to do this type of work at one time. And how do you deal if you you decided that you have a harmonic problem? How do you handle a harmonic problem? So that's the thing that we're going to be doing. Cool? Everybody's okay with this? Okay, so let's go and talk a little bit about harmonic. So what is harmonic? You're going to see a couple of things, guys. I can't emphasize. We always look at the current, guys. But if you look at the current and the voltage, it's, uh, it's it, it, that operate at a frequency of multiples of the fundamental uh, power frequency. So if you, a lot of people don't, you see that distorted signal and you say, what the heck is this? Harmonics, as a matter of fact, I sinus are sinusoidal waves. They are sinusoidal waves that run at different frequency. So you can have um, a harmonic and it's, it, it, everybody knows that we generate for the most part electricity as a sinusoidal, wa sinusoidal wave, right? That sine wave. This is the best wave that you can ever do. That wave is for the current and the voltage, both of them with different, free, with different magnitude, right? And, and phase shift between them that create the power factor. What the harmonic do guys, but we, we generate the 60 Hertz in the US. What harmonic, uh, harmonics are they are sinusoidal wave at different frequencies but what happened guys is when you mix a sinusoidal wave at this with this frequency and another sinusoidal wave at different frequency when you mix them together on in one signal it created this distorted signal that creates problems for us so i can't emphasize they are multiple of fundamental power frequency uh who are the offenders non-linear modes who are any time Here's how the offenders will harmonic guys. If any time you take AC and convert it to DC, you have just created some type of harmonic. Every time you distort that beautiful sinusoidal wave that we all live, live with and we can't live without, every time you take this signal and you alter this signal by making it different, either as step voltage, this is a sinusoidal wave, you make it a step voltage, you make it a DC, you have just altered the characteristics of the signal. You created harmonics. You created harmonics. So this is a big, big, big deal. Um, so reduced by nonlinear loads that draws um, that current in a pulses rather than continuous. That's how they define it. So long story short, in order to know if you have a harmonic or not, look around you. If you have a laptop, you are working on DC, right? You have a, a DC converter that converts AC to DC. You have a harmonic printer, plotters, all of these, um, electronic ballast, VFDs, soft start, anything, anytime you have some type of electronic, you brought your 480 on this side, guys, and you have, we all know what the bridge does. What does the bridge do? Convert to DC. So you got your DC. So what did I do? I took a signal that's supposed to be sinusoidal and converted to DC. I altered the characteristics of the sinusoidal signal. I created a problem with harmonic. So up, up to this point, this is one problem. And then you know what they do? These are, like VFDs will work on this principle. Then they put, they put it through this transistor, and the transistor actually spit this voltage. First, they convert it to DC. This is VFD principle. You convert to DC. Then you, then, then you can control the DC. That's how they control the speed, VFDs. Control. The reason why we take AC to DC back to some form or an AC is to control the speed. So they tweak the frequent, they tweak the speed here, the voltage, so it can control the speed. But the outcome, guys, will be some type of a pulsation, they call it. That's heavy in harmonic. That's heavy in harmonic. That's that's a big deal in harmonic. So so that's a, a major, major part of harmonic. Um, Nick, my friend, we the if, if we are used to generate this voltage and we love to live with it. This is what you need. This is if you have guys uh, motors, if you have a motor or a heater or anything that does not have electronic equipment, 
that's how you put the signal voltage in the motor, you get a current, the same signal. So this signal could be a voltage signal and or a current signal, right? A voltage signal and a current signal with different magnitude, obviously, because the current is going to be different. So what happened is, if you add, um, if you add, um, so this, if you take the signal, convert it to DC, or convert it to other forms of signals, as a step signal, a saw signal, whatever type of signals, you just created harmonics. So that when you create the harmonic from a sinusoidal, you get into distorted, so-called distorted signal, and you can tell how your, your signal is now distorted. But what I, wa what I want to emphasize to a lot of people, so this is distorted signal for the current, and this is distorted signal for the voltage, and they, they are distorted at different values. You can see how you distort the signal for the current. Um, I don't know if I can get that one. It's still the same. Um, what I want to emphasize, guys, is um, I can't. Oops, yeah, I can't. What I want to emphasize: this signal that you're looking at, this signal. Believe it, a lot of people don't they don't understand. Is this signal is here's the fundamental. This is plus another frequency. That tiny little. So if, if I have the 60 hertz. And I have 120 hertz. Um, add these two signals together. Remember, this is running 120, so you have two in one here. So this will look something like this when you add them together. Can you guys see how? Because this is running at 120, this is running at 60. When you add these two points together here, when you add it, you end up for the most part with something similar to these. So that's where the distortion becomes. You are, you have signals other than the 60 hertz you have signals other than 60 hertz so uh, so i would have a signal here's one signal 60 hertz here's another signal here smaller at 120 a third signal what's three times uh, 120 180 right three times 120 is three. Uh, no three times uh, 60. 180. 180. So this will be this will be one times sixty. This will be two times sixty. This will be three times sixty, and you keep going. They are multiples of the fundamental frequency that we use in the U.S. is sixty. If it uses fifty, it's going to be a fifty. So that's basically what what it is. It's another sinusoidal wave at different frequency. When you add them up together, it created this ugly looking thing. Who cares? This will destroy, make your system malfunction. That's what we care about. Distorted signal. Okay, so symptoms of harmonic. Um, a couple of things that why we care. Overheat. I always have been doing it for a while, guys. I, when I teach electricity for electricians or, or engineers or anybody, I always say enemy number one of electricity is what? Heat. Heat. We hate heat. So heat, heat in conductors will burn termination, special termination will heat up and burn. Heats in transformers will will they fail prematurely? If they're supposed to live for 20 years, now they live at 10 years. Who cares? You're paying more for the equipment. Heat is a big deal. Another symptoms, guys, is circuit breakers are tripping, a nuisance tripping of circuit breakers. Circuit breakers are current sensors. If the if the current is distorted, it will um, it will send a signal to them that you have a short circuit. Uh, or a ground fault when in reality they don't have a short circuit of ground fault, number one. Number two, because we have more current at different frequencies, it creates heat. So uh, electro, especially thermomagnetic circuit breakers are heat function, they function on heat. So if we get more heat on them, what do you think you do? They're going to trip, they're going to trip nuisance tripping. So that's a, a, a big, big, big deal. What causes the overheating? What causes the overheating on them? Yes. Well, you're having multiple signals, so you have you have multiple currents going through the, the circuit breaker. One current is 60 hertz, so I squared R for 60, and one current at 120 hertz, I squared R for 120, and a third current for 180 hertz, I squared R. So each one of them, yes, each one of them will create, each one of these currents will create its own heat. So like a bad feed. Kind of like back to current, it's like when you're converting, let's say you've got a BFD or something, and yeah, you use the current. And it's really more currents riding on the same signal, 
more current trying on the same signal. So let me just let me show you a couple of things, guys. Before we go classification of harmonics, please know that one uh, for your own sake and also for the test, because that will be the test. Uh, harmonics are classified by names. The first thing we classify them is names. So second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, sixth harmonic, 120th harmonic. That's how they name them. The name is multiples of the frequency, so it's classified by name. Second, they're classified by frequency. So the set, the first harmonic. Uh, so what's the first harmonic, by the way? What's the first harmonic? The 60 hertz. The actually the 60 hertz is the first harmonic. The second harmonic. What's the frequency of the second harmonic? 60. What's the frequency of the third harmonic? 60 times 3 is 1. 180. What's the what's the fourth? Oh, the second. I'm sorry. The second. What did no? The second. Oops. There you go. So the second one should be 120. You're also right. The third one will be 180, and add another 60 to this will be get you what? 240. 240 hertz. And you keep going. You keep going. So that's the frequency for each one of these harmonics. They are all sinusoidal at different frequencies. If 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 you understand telecommunication, that makes perfect sense. If, if you ever heard, guys, about PLCs, everybody heard about PLCs? Yep, but not the PLCs that I mean. This is the power line carrier. PLCs is in power line carrier. If you heard about power line carrier, that's basically how they send a telecommunication signal over the power lines. Exactly the same principle. They have a, a voltage and a current that's running at different frequencies. The power lines are running at 60. So if you put, uh, I don't know what, what's it, it's uh, uh, 120 megahertz, signal on the lines that doesn't interfere with the 60 hertz it, it doesn't they don't see each other that's like a truck and a car driving on the highway and side by side and they they're not they're not interfering in each other's business okay so that's the that's the frequency the sequence the sequence guys or the phase of rotation there are three sequences press the sequence number one is zero sequence number one um, is uh, zero, positive, negative. Zero, positive, negative. Zero, this is how you understand this, the sequence for harmonic. Zero, it does not affect the rotation of the motor. So if the motor is rotating clockwise, it, it doesn't have any effect on the rotation of motor, though it affects the neutral. Positive harmonic, they will speed the motor. So if your motor is running at uh, 1825, uh, I mean, 1725, it might run at 1730. It will speed the motor. The positive harmonics speed motors, make them run slightly faster. Negative harmonic, they have the effect of counter affecting the, uh, ter basically slowing down your motor. They slow down your motor. Can I get you guys to understand these? Harmonics name, second, third, fourth, harmonic frequency, multiples of the 60 hertz, and the sequence, the zero, has no effect on the speed of a motor. Positive speed the motor, negative slows the motor. Does that make sense? Negative slows the motor. And I'll show you how they go in terms of sequence in a second. Any question, guys, about classification of harmonics? They have a name, they have a frequency, and they have a sequence. Name, frequency, and sequence. Any question? We're coming in a second here, the triplet. So that's basically the is right here odd so um harmonics triplets you're going to hear this term all the time because it screws up uh, your uh, harmonics triplets it screws up your neutral the triplets are offenders bad offenders for neutral these are zero sequence what's the sequence for them zero so do they speed the motor or slow it down they don't speed it or they don't slow it down they have no effect on the motor rotation what do they affect though the odd ones, the odd harmonics, the odd triplets, the odd triplets um, of the third harmonic, oh, they are odd triplets of third harmonics. So the third odd triplets, well, the first one it will be the third. Uh, what's next? Not the second. Three times three, the ninth. And uh, what else? Three times anything odd. Um, of the third, so multiply. Here is the third. You will multiply by uh, an odd, an, an odd number here. So three times three, they'll give you the nine, the nine. Um, three times five. Yep. Yeah, three times five times three. 
that will get you 15, the 15th, and so forth. These are these are so-called odd multiples of the third harmonics. Why are they so important and why are they singled out? Because these are the ones that burn your neutral in a three-phase system. That's why we always oversize a neutral or we have a single neutral with every phase. Very, very important. If you guys go to um, uh, 220.61 in the NEC code book, 220.61 in the NEC code book, in particular, you go to C, it will say, it will tell you it's prohibited, it's prohibited to reduce the neutral of a three phase system solidly grounded. Why? Three phase system. That's exactly why, because of the triplets. So if you go 220.60, if you have a harmonic problem, we said your neutral, number one, count as a carrying conductor. Number two, you cannot derate the neutral. That's because of this problem. So what do they do? They are always on a three phase, on a three phase four wire system, three phase four wire system. That's a major problem. So what do they do, guys? And instead of phase A, phase B, phase C, 10, 10, 10, a three phase, they should add up to what? Balanced system, the neutral should add up to zero. You put 10, 10, 10, and you end up with 20 on the neutral. Because these offenders, they don't add up to zero. They just, they have no sequence. They, they are zero, the, the sequence is zero. So they add up algebraically. So you have 10, 10, 10, you end up with 30 on each one of them. Does that make sense, guys? Why they are major offenders? These are the triplets. They are odd multiples of the third harmonics. So which one of them add multiples of third harmonics? They have zero sequence, meaning they don't affect the speed of a motor either way. But what they do is they screw up your the relationship, the, they call it phasal relationship in a three-phase system. And the most important thing is they add neutral, they increase the load in the neutral and they create heat in the neutral. So if you go to a three-phase, we have it in our lab here in, a, in the fifth quarter one time, we opened the panel there and the neutral was completely burned. The neutral was burned. That could be an indication that we have a harmonic problem um, that creating, because the load is almost balanced when you balance it on three fifths. That could be an indication of a harmonic problem. Any question guys about this? Any question about the odd multiples of the third harmonic, the triplet? These are the single most important things when it comes to not derating the neutral and when it comes to a, considering the neutral a current carrying conductor. A current carrying conductor. We'll talk about solving the problem for this one, guys. That's why number so solution number one, when we said the uh, lighting panels, what did we say? You have 225 amp lighting panel. Do we derate the neutral? It's uh, not a good idea to derate the neutral. They're all electronically driven ballast. So you have a full neutral. When we go, when we went to Allianz and we looked at their data center and we looked at the PDUs, if you look inside the PDUs, because these are these are the offenders, all what they do is they, they take AC, convert it to DC, and they cook uh, data. So these are servers are major offenders. So what they do in the PDUs, guys, they have double harmonic. If the T225 amp PDU, they have, the phase will be 225 amp, the bus, 225 amp, and the neutral, they have a 400 amp neutral inside them. 400 amp, double the phase, double the phase because of harmonics, because of harmonics, which is the triplet, the odd multiples of the third harmonic. Any question, guys, about this? So if you don't want to know it because if it's important, know it because it's going to be in the test. Okay, so here's what we're talking about, guys. This neutral, so you have a 10 here and a 10 here and a 10 here, and you end up with uh, 30 amps here. Instead of, you're supposed to get a zero. You're supposed to get a zero, but you end up with 30 amps or 20 amps because of the uh, triplets, triplets and the harmonics. That's a big deal on a three-phase system. Three-phase system was neutral. So what a lot of engineers do to solve this problem, especially in the brand circuit, they pull a neutral with every a neutral with every phase on the brand circuit. On a on a feeder and service, you don't derate the neutral. You have the neutral the same size as the phases. This is becomes a big deal up to 400 amp panel. You know, after 400 amp panels, guys, you start mixing motors in the mix, and the motor will mitigate them. Mitigate them. Okay, another effect, guys. So we have the triplets are screwing up our neutral. They're not touching anything about the motors. They're not speeding it. The second one is thermomagnetic 
uh, if you have a thermomagnetic circuit breaker, which tons of them, up to 1,200, 1,500 amps, you can buy them. They, these guys are designed, guys, to work on an RMS value, and they're designed to work on the concept of heat. So if you put more current, uh, uh, multiple currents at different frequencies, you're creating more heat into them. Who cares? They trip prematurely, uh, nuisancely. So that creates more, more problems. So the breakers will trip when they shouldn't, or when they shouldn't, or they, they don't trip when they should. So, uh, so they malfunction. They make the circuit breakers malfunction. And the last thing you want to do is a circuit breaker does not trip when it's supposed to trip, or also worse, to trip when it's not supposed to trip, nuisance tripping. You hear a lot about, if you're working as an electrician or an engineer and your circuit breakers are tripping, you'll hear a lot about the managers. You probably, your job would be count on that one if they keep tripping. You have to solve the problem, right? We are in the business of solving problem for customers. Keep this in mind. Any question, guys, about the thermomagnetic? They heat, they heat because, they heat because I have now, I have, here's my signal number one. This is 60 hertz plus another signal here. This is coming from 120 plus another signal here. This is coming from uh, uh, 180. All these signals are going right through your transformer, right through your thermomagnetic. Each one of them is a current at different frequencies. It will create certain amount of heat. Obviously, the major part of the heat is going to be coming from the 60 hertz. The rest of them, they, these will contribute to the heat inside your build, in, in, inside your circuit breaker, and it will prematurely um, or nuisancely trip. Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Tell my friend. You're using the word signal and voltage interchangeably. Signal and vo signal could be voltage or or current. Voltage or current. It takes voltage to make current. Work. Yes, absolutely. To get a current, yeah, absolutely. Okay, electronic circuit breakers, guys. So the, these are the thermomagnetic circuit breakers are heat sensitive. Electronic circuit breakers are current sensitive, right? They sense the peak. Uh, current peaks of the harmonics are higher, so they can also mal malfunction. Um, are generally higher than the, the fundamental. So uh, one of you will say, Nick will say, Chad, I have a power circuit breaker run from a digital, like uh, like the one that we use for our project, digital circuit breakers. I don't care about heat, I'm sensing current. Also, they can screw up the sensing mechanism for your current. There's a lot of mitigation, I don't want to even go there. Okay, so here's the... Um, Here's the fundamental sine wave and the harmonic wave. I don't know if you, you guys can see how they are riding on each other. There's the, the one that you, the one that we love, we want to keep, we want to maintain voltage or current wise. <clears throat> and the rest of them are riding on it. The other, the other harmonic are riding it. So this is the one that suppose we what we want. The rest are actually riding on it. This looks like the second, the third harmonic. So these are two. Now when you when you mix them up, when you mix them together, so these are kind of when you separate them, when you mix them together, guys, that's where it looks, the signal looks something like this. When you add the two signals together, when you add the two signals together. A couple, another thing, guys, is panel boards also. Panel boards, the triplin. The, multi the odd multiples of the third current can cause problems for the neutral. The neutral and ducts and, in, and, and lugs, that's what we say in our lab the other day, the, a couple of months ago when we burned that baby. Um, lugs in the neutral of panels, because remember, you're connecting all, not just grand circuit, all the way to the lugs that burn them, heat, uh, can cause vibration. Chris, you know that more about this more than I do. You start, guys, going into higher frequencies, now you have two problems. You have interference because you get higher frequencies, you move from the power industry into the telecommunication industry. Everybody knows that? The barrier between telecommunication and power is frequency. We use 60 hertz, they use megahertz and gigahertz and kilohertz. You start digging to that frequency, you start creating, you basically generating frequencies and interfering with equipment. And vibration is part of it. Um, So minimize the interference by cabling, put all your cables in the same raceways. 
Um, this is just a couple of things, guys, about determining. Determining now, if you want to go to your building and you need to determine if you have a harmonic problem in a single phase, make an equipment checklist. This is typical for single or three phase. Have an equipment checklist. Do I have a printer? Always printer, plotters. Do I have, especially VFDs, do I have a soft stock? Do I have a VFD? Um, do I have UPS system? Do I have uh, uh, drives, DC drives, AC drives, soft starts? Um, UPS system um, and also all these electronic equipment. So this is your then then you have you could have a harmonic problem. Review the maintenance record. Talk to your maintenance electrician at us and then we get a list from Mr. Uh, Kiljik with all the the tripping that happening in the building. Do we have circuit breakers that seems to be tripping for no reason? They're not overloaded. We know the load on them is not a whole lot, but they keep tripping. So the maintenance record. Um, especially with tripping on the circuit breaker for no apparent reason. Because the circuit breaker should, must trip if you have an apparent reason. And check the transformers for overheat. Guys, now with with heat guns, you can point at any point, you know, right? Well, you can measure just by pointing at any device and can measure the heat inside this device. Transformer is one of them, or panels, and it can tell you if it's overheating or not, right? Everybody knows that. That's what they use for maintenance all the time. You point it at that equipment. And it will heat, it will check if they have a heat problem. You have a heat problem in your transformers, your circuit breakers are tripping, and you have uh, VFDs. What would that be the offender? So you have some harmonic problems. You have some type of harmonic problems. This is a couple of things, guys, um, that they can measure. For single phase, <clears throat> for single phase, um, so this is a couple of meters that you want. Obviously, most of the meter RMS they call it two RMS meters. Two RMS meter guys. If you have if you have a nice sine wave, they can correctly measure it. And if also if you have a square wave, which is coming from a VFD, they can also correctly measure it. And also if you have a distorted wave, they can also correctly measure it. Who cares? The question: Who cares? When you grab your two RMS meters, which all a lot of them are. And you put it across the four out, and you read. You are reading the current that's coming out of the are all the frequencies. So that's a real current that's coming out of not just a fundamental. Okay. Now, if you have an average one, look at the average one only works correct if you have a new uh, sinusoidal wave. If it's a square wave, it will be 10% approximately higher. If it's a square wave, and if it's a distorted wave, as much as 50% lower, as much as 50% lower. Obviously, then if you're using an average response meter on a distorted wave uh, and the current shows 50, your current could be real, current could be as much as 100 when, when you are not knowing, without knowing. So, one of the solutions for single phase guys is to measure it with a true arm mass, measure it with an average, divide, divide the average by the arm mass, and make sure you are not. You are um, make sure you're within that 10% value, within that 10% value when you divide them, because they should be only different in 10%. If you are further away than 10%, when you divide, uh, so the average should be uh, higher, 10% higher. When you divide the average by the R mass, you should come up with something like 1.10. If you came up, with, if you came up with different than that, more than that then what you're having is you're having harmonic problem. So that's how they do it. They go measure it with the average, measure with the two mass, divided by each other, make sure they are within 1.1 of each other. <clears throat> okay, so that's yours. Um, this is where the, guys, the RMS says, this is where you value RMS with the average. So the the, uh, the RMS is higher than average in this single phase by um, the, your RMS is going to be higher than your average. Your RMS is going to be higher than your average. Then you have a, a harmonic problem. Fifty six twenty four. Okay, and how how far are they from each other? We'll decide if you have a harmonic problem. Here's what, uh, for single phase, you just take the measurement of these two there in the book and divide these two numbers by each other. 
and that will give you an indication measure average better arm mass divide the two numbers by each other on the circuit and get the number if you're within 10 percent you're okay if you're different more than 10 percent um or less than 10 percent then you have a harmonic problem you have a harmonic problem You go to the three-phase system, guys. For three-phase system, they have a lot of other equipment that you can go. You have to have a list, the same list that we use for sim very similar list. You have to collect the list on a three-phase system. Um, but they have a couple of measurements that they use. The best, the best way of measuring if you have a harmonic problem is to have a harmonic analyzer. A meter, a high-end meter in a 4,000 amp switch gear will analyze your system and get you the harmonic, harmonic analyzer. Um, the poor man's job to do that, you can measure the current, the phase current, as well as the neutral current. Uh, you have a couple of measurements you have to do. Number one, the true arm mass, you're going to measure with a true arm mass crest and measure A, B, C, and a neutral. Then you're going to measure at the average uh, with A, B, C, and a neutral. And here's what you recorded average, so here's phase A. This is measurement phase, uh, the arm mass, this is my average. And I recorded phase A, phase B, phase C, and my neutral. And these are the values that you got for each one of these, okay? So these are the values that you got from each one of them. They're different. Can you guys see that? That's measure easy, planning on an average and And then what you do, we'll get into calculating them in a second. So these are the measurements you're going to find for average and arm mass and make sure they are not far away. We're going to do some calculation in them in a second in a three-phase system. Um, dealing with harmonics, let me jump directly into the calculation that we use. Okay, dealing with harmonics, guys, again, they always, they always say power quality. If you, if you contact uh, Square D or Color Hammer, they have a power quality di uh, division that deals strictly with this one. So they, recommend, they have a lot of recommendation. Worst scenario, guys, you can add filters. You can add filters to filter your harmonics. Um, a couple of things, if you have a three-phase, here's a three-phase, which is 99% of your system is going to be three-phase, four-wire system, to reduce the current. A balance, balancing the current of every phase that, 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 that also reduce the problem of harmonics. And for the turbulence, remember that turbulence, the offenders on the neutral, neutral and harmonic filters. You can have harmonic filters. Um, so present on a neutral conductor, a harmonic filter at the load. You can have some harmonic filters at the load. Most of VFDs guys and soft start and all the stuff, the manufacturer will have some filter to reduce the effect of harmonics on the system. Um, another way, these are living with the, with the evil, I call it, like I always say. Um, another way of living with it is you pull an extra neutral with every phase. So there will be phase A neutral, phase B neutral, phase C neutral. So you're going to end up with six conductor versus four conductor system. That's on a branch circuit. It makes a lot of sense on branch circuit, not on Peters. Um, install a larger neutral. Install a larger neutral or not derating a neutral. That's for feeders, Chris. Install a larger neutral, not derating the neutral. Um, reduce the rate or also the rate or reduce the amount of load on the transformer. That's kind of a, another solution is if this transformer can handle 50 kVA, load it for 30 kVA. Any question guys about the solutions for harmonics? Balance the three-phase loads. That's a big deal when you have a harmonic problem. For the triplets, you can have filters in the load. You can pull extra neutral, larger new extra neutral conductors, larger and neutral on feeders, extra on branch circuits, and uh, derate the load on the transformer. So if you have a transformer that can handle 50 horse, 50, uh, put uh, 30 on it. Any comments? Any questions? Yep. Any comments, any questions? Filters on the load. Cool. Okay, so that's, um, now the, the last thing guys on this chapter talk about how to derate, derating the transformers. If you, if you know you have a harmonic problem, you have two options, either you have filters, what they do guys, they have filters, and these filters, 
most of these filters, Chris, they can, with what filters do, guys, they, it's a diode, uh, not a, it's a capacitor and inductor and a resistor. That's what a filter is designed specifically to capture frequency. So it you put it in your system, and if it looks at 60 hertz, you are allowed to get in. If it, if it sees 120, nope, it chokes it. That's what a filter is. Now, there's other problem with filters. They create uh, resonance and create a lot of other issues. But for the most part, that's what they do. They look at the signal. If you're 60 hertz, move on, move, continue going. They, I, we like you. If you're 120, stop. If you're 180 hertz, they look at the frequency. Stop. They choke it. They don't allow them to go. They use them filters are a major part in, in the telecommunication industry. That's how when you tune, when you guys tune to a certain um, radio station, right? You're using a filter. You're fil you're gapping, you're you're narrowing, and you say, I don't want I want to look at uh, uh, 91.1. Anybody listen to 91.1? Anybody knows what 91, 91.1, 91.1? Rob, what is it? NPR. Yeah, NPR. If you want to zoom to 91.1 megahertz, um, then you just tweak it and you, you filter. Now I just want to look at this one. If I want to go, what else? Give me another channel. I don't listen to channel. You move to the other section and you just, you're looking, you're allowing yourself to focus on one frequency. That's what the filter are. They zoom into the 60 hertz only. Okay, to the, set, the last thing guys is to derate. The rate equivalent, there is industry standard that they do, they do some calculation to the rate that if you can't handle the problem of harmonic, you want to live with, here's what we want you to do. We don't want you to burn your transformer. So go derate it. Do you guys remember how we derate for feeders and friend circuits and so forth? We derate. So they have a factor that they do to derate. Um, so what do you do to do the derating? You have two uh, amp measurements. Two amp measurements you have to do. One is arm mass. And the other one is instantaneous peak. So you know that the signal, so you, what you do is you measure this one, that's gonna be the peak. And you also measure the RMS, which is the average value of the signal. The peak and the average value of the signal. Two measurements with a special meter that you measure the peak and average value. Here's what you get. As <clears throat> so here's your RMS, here's the peak. This is the RMS value, this is the peak, right? So if you have a signal like this, um, this one would be the top or the bottom, that's my peak. The average will be right, uh, the RMS value will be somewhere in that area, right? So you measure these two values for all the three phases and a neutral, for all the three phases and neutral, and you record them, cool? Record them with special meters. The average is there also to give you an idea they do the same calculation that we did in average. After you do that, here's what they do, guys. They go average, then they take the average of the RMS. So long story short, uh, Nick, they take the RMS value, the phases, they add them up and they average them. They average these, and they average the, the peak. You know how to average three numbers. Add them up and divide them by the number, right? So the average and RMS, and also the average, the peak, then they multiply, they, this is a multiplier with there, then they put them into THDF. This is called total harmonic distortion factor. Total harmonic distortion factor, a factor that you derate the transformer to make sure it's not gonna burn under these harmonics. Derating factor, remember that derating factor for conductors? Very similar to derating factor for conductor. So Chris, then you take this number here, and you put it at the top here, and you take this number here, and you put it at the bottom. So you take your RMS, multiply it by 1.414, and divide it by the peak. Divide it by the peak. And guess, everybody knows what this number is? That's your derating factor. So take this. I have 100 kVA XFR. And if I measure on the line side of the, on, on the load side of a transformer, these, if I got these measurements on every phase, and I came up with this factor, Chris, then you take this factor, which is 0.722, multiply this one by 100, and I use this one to make it easy for me to do the math, that would be 72.2 kVA. Who cares? This is the value that your transformer is going to be running at now. 
So what does that mean? Your Lord, your Lord William cannot be higher than this on this uh, 100, uh, 100 uh, kVA transformer. That's one way of living with the evil. A lot of people would rather do that, guys, other than putting filters, because filters could create resonance and could create other things and maintenance. Every time you add, everybody knows in a, in a power system, guys, every time you add a component, it's more things to do, more things to fail on you, right? So that could be a solution. Well, let's just live with this uh, cancer um, and um, live with it. That's living with the evil, I call it, versus confronting the evil. Conf you only can confront that baby by doing what? By harmon by filters. That's the only way you can you can uh, you can do it. Living with that, berate. it. Another. Um, any question, guys, about doing this math? Really straightforward. Your math is straightforward. Another method. Uh, so you you either have filters. Another method, guys, I triple E uh, recommend for get, uh, for dealing with harmonics is to mix your loads. For example, Chris, if I have. Um, Air, uh, rooftop units, especially the one that's not driven by VFDs, uh, rooftop units, moral units, I mix them up with an air, within an area where there's uh, heavy harmonic. So the non-harmonic loads and the harmonic loads, when they're mixed together, the non-harmonic loads will minimize the effect of the harmonics. There are studies have been done. If you mix them up, it will, it will reduce it. How do I mix them up? So if, if this is my switch gear, Chris, this is my switch gear, and I have my lighting panel here, lighting panel. I have my mechanical equipment, mechanical equipment panel. So this is where I can find a lot of like NEMAs, a lot of NEMAs, no VFDs. And this is lighting panel. I have tons of, um, of uh, electronic ballast. So by having motors, these will be motors here. These will be lights driven by electronic ballast and also i will have vfds here vfds so by mixing mo nema motors nema driven controlled motors with vfds that mixture will mitigate will um, minimize the effect of harmonics minimize the effect of harmonics any question about harmonics yes sir <laughs> Total harmonic distortion factor. Yeah. No. That's based on the measured value in your building. Oh, yeah. That number? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's given. Yeah, thank you. you this Absolutely. It's really no 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 big deal. This is the value that's coming from the square root of two. The square root of two. Any question guys about this? Let me show you uh, um with this disregard and let me just show you a couple of pictures and I'll let you Uh, we talked about this one. I just want to show the harmonic distortion. There's a, a picture of all the is different harmonics. Here you go. This is what I want to show you because you guys know this was not there. This is very important, Chris. Um, these are the harmonics. The first one is the name. I don't know if you can see. Oops, that's not a good idea to, to write it here. The name of the harmonics here. Everybody see that, guys? The name of the harmonic then the frequency then the sequence for every single harmonic in order to understand that one you have to understand this this is the single most important one so the in the first harmonic so if you have the first the first harmonic guys is the one that you're going to see this is my 60 hertz this is my 60 hertz right that's the fundamental they call it fundamental Chris, it start as positive fundamental is always take the positive they go positive, negative, zero. Positive, negative, zero. Positive, negative, zero. That's how the sequence always goes. So if I ask you the 99th harmonic, is it going to be positive or negative or zero? You have to do the calculation to find is it positive, negative, or zero. OK, so this is the first. The second harmonic, guys, it's nothing other than two signals in one. You can use your imagination here. 
So this is my second harmonic. This will be the 120. The third, you will have three inside this. Is it, does that make sense? So here's my second harmonic. What, what's the frequency of the second harmonic? A lot of 120. What's the sequence? Negative. What does that mean to the motor? Slows it down or speed it? Slows it down. Negative slows it down. Positive speeds it. Zero. No effect on the harmonic. Okay, third harmonic, the single most, the odd, uh, the triplets. The triplets are the third harmonic. This, what does this do to the neutral? That's the most, the most offender when it comes to the neutral, right? And also the ninth is another one. The zero, the ninth. Look at the frequency of the ninth, Chris. 560. Every, everybody knows, guys, how they came up with these numbers. You basically multiply three by 60. You multiply here by 60, multiply 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 by 60. In order to get the frequency, you multiply the name by 60. Nine times 60, 540. Seven times 60, 420 hertz. And what's the what's the unit for this, Mr. Hertz? Hertz. Any question is about this? You don't understand harmonic unless you understand the name of the harmonic, the sequence, and the frequency. The sequence and the frequency. What does the sequence mean? Positive, rolls it forward. Negative, it has it slows down motors. And zero, it kills a neutral for the most part. Any question? So you can imagine when you have a distorted signal press, when you have a signal like this, I'm just trying to make it as distorted as that signal is actually, believe it or not, is addition of, let's just say this signal that you're looking at, guys, it could be, it could be an addition of first 60 hertz plus um, 120, 120 plus, when you add them all up, plus, uh, let's do another one here, uh, 180 plus uh 240 240 when you add these these signals at these frequencies this is what you um not exactly but this is what we you could up with have have you ever guys learned when in uh, in math how to add signals like two signals together graphically on a graphic paper and you add the the, the two signals that line right here if I add these two points here, right in here, can you see that? If I add them up, the addition, the signal will go up here, right? So you take points on the signal and you add them up. You just take certain points on every point of the signal and you add them up. That's where adding the signal is. That's where the distortion in your signal ends up. Any question? Any question about harmonics? This is one more tool to put it in your um, in, in your toolbox as a designer. You guys, I know some of you probably might never use this in your lifetime. It's good information to know. Otherwise, we will make generate generate dollar value to our employers if we know how understand harmonics and how to analyze them. People hire us as consulting engineers, guys, to go evaluate hospitals because of harmonic issues. You need to be able to. And at least this is a, an intro to understand the, where to start. This is a start point. I can't emphasize, Chris, in our industry, you can have meters, meters. If you guys look at Square D and Color Hammer, um, all those guys, they will make meters, digital meters that can communicate with via your computer and can pull all this data directly from, from, the, from your system. And it, you don't have to go even measure this. You can it will tell you if you have a harmonic distortion and calculate the harmonic distortion factor and so forth because of harmonic guys most of the manufacturers all the manufacturers are required that they take ac to dc chris to tell you one value it's called total harmonic distortion total harmonic distortion um, every time you look at vfd every time you look at a vfd Every time you look at any equipment, it will give you on it uh, this number, total harmonic distortion, supposed to be maintained, I think, five between five and ten percent. 
So you're not supposed to dis to distort to total harmonic distortion. You're not supposed to distort the signal more than uh, 10%. Uh, 10%. Uh, there's regulation, IEEE regulation, and utility regulations. Guess what? A lot of people don't think about this. Utilities will maintain this uh, total harmonic distortion, and they have also their level of at in the current at the current as well as the frequency. By IEEE standards, you have to maintain certain harmonic distortion. So just be aware of that one too. Okay, I think I remember 10 of I think voltage 10% total harmonic distortion. So when you look in VFD, guys, or UPS, when you look at the UPS sheet, a lot of people that you got from me, look at this number, total harmonic distortion. tells you we, we as manufacturer guarantee that our equipment will meet IEEE standard by maintaining the total harmonic distortion within 5% or 10%. That's what you want to install. If they don't guarantee that, this means this equipment that you're installing is, this, is going to generate a lot of harmonic in your building. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? Okay. What I'm going to do, guys, tomorrow we'll do hazardous location. And that will be, please read this chapter, guys. By any means, this is not going to make you an expert in harmonics. No way. I mean, this is just kind of getting your fingers into, into it. Okay. Thank you.